Hello sailors, you're watching the Dodger Kebab, and this video is a top 10 of 80s arcade games that never get old. Lots of games that come out these days have sod all the playability. You play through it, and after you've smashed it, it never gets played again. Assassin's Creed 2 was a great game. Do I really want to play through it all over again? Nah, screw Ezio. Like I'd give a shit if I collected all the feathers or not. 80s arcade games were not like that. Many games had you coming back for more over and over again to empty your wallet faster than some sort of deluxe hooker. Let's go! Number 10. You control Tiki the Kiwi. Ah, oh, you thought Kiwi looked like this? Nah, mate, you got that all wrong. Anyway, using this game's tight controls and many vehicles, you have to guide Tiki through various stages of New Zealand to rescue your friends. How did they get trapped in the first place? Well, one day they were sitting around, skipping and smoking. <laughs> Then this walrus came along and bagged them all up. Why? Fuck you, that's why. Anyway, you need to platform through the levels and or find the secret warps to blow most of the levels off. There's also bosses to fight, like this frozen whale here who will eat you halfway through your encounter with him. This is a great game, which is always fun to play. Number 9. Ever fancied being a weird monkey man running through a corridor of traps? If the answer is yes, then you really need to take a good, long, hard look at your life. Although, on the bright side, Namco's Metro Cross is going to be right up your street. Stay on the blue and white tiles and avoid the green ones. Also, mind the various traps like giant red coke cans, water traps, hurdles, etc. Jumping on blue coke cans pauses the timer that ticks down the amount of seconds that you have left to reach the goal. A slightly strange but simple and fun game that's not spoilt by modern ideas. If this game was made now, some prick would ruin it with some sort of buy more time for only one pound. Number 8 is it an RPG? Is it an adventure game? Is it an arcade game? Well, it's all these things, and only the real question is how they went from this in the first Wonder Boy game to this in the sequel. It's like Capcom saying, we've had really great user feedback from Street Fighter 2, so we're going to follow that up with a dating sim where Chun-Li is at the mercy of Blanka's sexual exploits. You play as Wonder Boy as you fight bad guys, try to buy boots, armor and a shield in a game that tries its hardest not to give you any gold. It's a fun vibrant adventure with lots of secrets to find, challenging levels and the most annoying sound effect to tell you when you're low on energy. I always enjoy coming back to this one because maybe this will be the time I find enough gold to really progress through the game. Number 7 1982 was hardly a stellar year for computer game graphics. I mean, look here. It's just a blank background with some ladders and pieces of burgers laying around. But damn, is this game a lot of fun. You play as this guy, whose name is Peter Pepper. Well done, Data East. 10 out of 10 for that one. Your mission is to run over all the burger pieces so that they fall down to the platform below. Once all the pieces of all the burgers are together, you win the level but in your way are various foods that seem to have gone AWOL. These chilies have got legs, so of course they're going to give you the run around. That'll teach Peter from messing with GM crops to make his burgers. Peter does have a line of defence against these genetically modified nightmares, and that's his pepper shaker, which he can use to stun them temporarily. Being a chef, you would have thought he'd have a big knife instead of just throwing spice around, but whatever. Number 6 so, the idea of Dig Dug is that you dig into the ground and use your pumping machine to blow up all the creatures that live there. Why are you digging into the earth and killing everyone there? Don't know, maybe you're some sort of 80s George Bush on an oil mission. Either way, blowing up these guys or tactically using the rocks to squash them is great fun and quite addictive. Maybe these oil companies aren't necessarily evil, and they're just playing some sort of game of Dig Dug that's got way out of hand. Number 5 Do you like the Over the Rainbow theme tune from The Wizard of Oz? Hope so, because you're going to hear it on an almost non-stop loop while playing this game. You'll only be given different music when you hear the jingle at the end of each round and the end level boss themes. But that's okay, because Rainbow Islands is a lot of fun. You progress upwards through each round using magic rainbows that you shoot out. Where they shoot out from is unknown. They could be shooting at your dick for all I know. It doesn't matter. All you need to do is head skywards, avoiding the bad guys through multiple rounds across different worlds which have different themes. It's easy to control, easy to play, but the bad guys are very good at luring you into a full sense of security. You think they're just too dumb to catch you and then BAM! The little bastards have got you again. Number 4 
A game where you serve up Budweiser to people is already a winning concept, and Bailey Midway pulled off a fucking blinder with this one. People come into the bar and you serve them beer as quick as you can. They might stay for another or leave. Once they've all left, you win the stage. Don't throw a beer down the bar if no one's going to catch it, and make sure you catch the glasses that they throw back because people are pricks and can't just place them down on the bar like normal people. In between level changes, you'll get the Beer Bandit minigame. See if you can pick the right one. Did you get it right as well? Yeah. I think this is a really great game which never gets old. Number 3. You want to hear a controversial statement? Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Now, do you want to hear one that's not completely fucking retarded? Pat Land is more fun than the original. Yes, I said it. I enjoy this game much more than I do the original Pill Chomper. Why? Because running, jumping, collecting fruit and eating ghosts and this is just brilliant. Finishing the area, meeting the fairy princess and getting the magic boots, oh god, it's just so good. The music, the graphics, just everything about this game is sublime. If you don't already, get Namco Museum 4 for the PS1. Pat Land is on there. The other games on there are a bit meh, but it doesn't matter, you're only buying it for Pat Land. Number 2. Too often these days, driving games are just too boring. Where's the Scud Races? Where's the Daytona USA's? Maybe not the soundtrack to Daytona USA. That was mental. I wanna fly sky high. Let's go together. I wanna fly sky high. Let's go together. I wanna. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The gaming god behind Scud Race, Daytona USA and Shenmue was this man, Yo Suzuki. He also created this masterpiece called Power Drift. He was like, we've got roller coasters, drag racers, we combine the two and BAM! Power Drift. You can't ask for a better description of the game than that either. So what's not to like here? Nothing. That's what. It's a brilliant game crafted by a god. Number one. You know, back in the day, Konami were great. Not like now. Track and Field is one of Konami's greatest games and easily the greatest sports game of the 80s. Yes, yeah, a lot of fun playing this game and trying to beat your own high scores with its just one more turn of dictability. But the true joy to be had from this game is playing it with friends. And that's when this turns from a good game to an outstanding game. Is the sequel to this good? It's close, but not quite. Only Decathlete is arguably as good as Track and Field, and that was created by Sega when their arcade teams were at their creative peak. Track and Field is a stunner of a game, simple controls, landmark gameplay, and iconic sound effects. Well, that's it for now. Bye bye. Hello sailors, thank you for watching the video, hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to support me in my future videos, there's a Patreon link down there if you want to go that way, or by request, I've now added a direct PayPal donate button, so if you want to do it that way, do it that way. There's other things you can do, you can follow me on social media like Facebook and Twitter, and why not have a look at these other videos I'm linking on the screen right now. Anyway, that's all, bye bye.